Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how you can take semi-structured JSON data from a Google Cloud Storage bucket and ingest it automatically into Snowflake into a variant column within the table automatically without any user intervention once you've set it all up and configured correctly using Snowpipe. So you may recall I did a video very similar to this but it involved Amazon S3 and involving setting up the security and auto ingesting JSON files from S3 into Snowflake. This is going to be a very similar demo, but a number of people have asked me specifically to do one for Google. So here it is. The diagram on the screen shows how it's going to work. I'm going to have a Google Cloud Storage bucket set up here. I'm going to drop JSON files in here. I'm going to have a service account which is linked between my Snowflake environment and my Google environment as well as a notification integration so that my PubSub topic and subscription specifically can let Snowflake know when there's new files ready to ingest that will notify Snowflake and in turn that will let Snowpipe ingest that data directly into my target table and move that JSON data from the Google Cloud storage bucket and into the variant data type column in my target table. So let's get into this and see how it's going to work. So the first step I need to undertake is to create a new bucket in GCP, Google Cloud Platform. This is the console, if you're not familiar with it. I'm logged in under my account that I've created previously, and I'm going to hit Create Bucket. I'm next going to give my bucket a name, and I'm going to call it GCS underscore bucket underscore snowpipe. I'm going to leave all the options as default for the time being for this particular demo and click create. That's now created my bucket. Now next I'm going to flick to my Snowflake environment and set up the environment as I need it. So I'm going to create a database called GCS underscore Snowpipe as well as one single table within that database called Snowpipe with one column called Col1 and the data type is variant. Variant is the data type, as a reminder, that Snowflake uses to store semi-structured data, such as JSON files, regardless of the schema. So if the schema changes, you can still load data into that column, and Snowflake won't complain at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a storage integration called GCS underscore bucket, which specifies that I'm creating an external stage for GCS. And I'm specifying my URL for the Google Cloud Storage bucket I've just created. So I'm going to execute that. The very next thing I need to do is retrieve the Cloud Storage service account for the Snowflake account. So if I run this, you'll see in the background it's actually created a GCP service account for the storage location, which is here. So I'm going to copy this out because I'm going to need it in a second. And I'm going to paste it just here. So now I need to go back into my Google Cloud console. And this time I'm into my I am an admin section. And I'm going to create a new role from the roles pane on the left hand side. So I'm going to create a new role. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Snowpipe underscore role. Now I'm going to add permissions and this is really important and if I just bring across a different window I've got here from the Snowflake official documentation, if you're just using your GCS bucket for data loading only, you only need to give it these particular permissions. However, if you want to load the data and then purge the files, and that means remove the files from your GCS bucket after loading them, you need to add an additional privilege, which is storage objects of delete. And if you want to load and unload data, you need to be able to provide the privilege storage objects or create, because when you unload data from Snowflake, you're effectively taking data that resides in Snowflake and moving it outside of Snowflake into an external cloud provider location, in this case, GCS. For now, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to look at data loading only. So let's go back to our Google Cloud Platform console, and we're going to add permissions. And in this bit, this is a little bit tricky to do with if you're not used to it. But if you go to the second filter pane here, and if we go storage dot buckets dot and hit return, 
we want to be able to we want to be able to get so we add that but we also want to go to storage dot objects and we want to do get and list and click that so we've got our three different permissions that we need for data loading only so this allows us to get a list of objects in our storage location as well as retrieving specific files within the bucket as well so we can read them we click create on that and now we've got our snow pipe role in here which is using which is denoted as a custom role which is enabled importantly note the other ones are from previous demos that are marked for deletion and they'll get cleaned up shortly okay so now the important bit we've created our role We've created the privilege it needs against a bucket that we've got, but we haven't linked the two together. So within the Google Cl Cloud Console, we need to go back to our bucket and we need to be able to link our new custom role to our bucket to make sure our role has the permissions against our bucket to read the files in there. So if we click the checkbox next to our bucket and we click Add Principle, what we want to do here is link our service account that we copied and pasted earlier from our storage integration in Snowflake. So if I copy that value, I go back into here and I'm going to create, I'm going to paste it in here and you can see that Google recognizes this as a principle, i.e. an account that it recognizes. So I've got this account, the service account in the background that's been created by Snowflake. I'm going to attach this to a role I've created, which is obviously best practice to create, have an account created to a role, have the role attached to privileges. And effectively, by creating that role, that's exactly what we've just done because we're going to click custom. We're going to go into Snowflake storage role, the one I've just created. That has the privileges on the GCS bucket that we need. We're going to click save here. So now we've got Snowflake, which is set up a storage integration account, service account in Google. In the background, we've set up a role which has the privileges and permissions that it requires to access the GCS bucket. We've attached all of that together. So now we've got a chain that allows Snowflake to be able to read from the GCS bucket. Let's go back to Snowflake. Okay, so now back in Snowflake, we need to create an external name stage, which is the pointer effectively to our GCS bucket. So we're saying create or replace stage, we're giving it a name GCS underscore stage, we're giving it a URL to our GCS bucket location, and we're specifying the fact that it should use this storage integration, GCS underscore bucket, which is what we've created up here earlier on. We're gonna create this. So let's execute that. Let's click show stages. We can see we've got our stage now set up, GCS underscore stage. We can see the URL is pointing at here, and we can see it's a type of external stage. Okay, so now we need to move on to create our pub sub topic and subscription in Google initially. So this is what's going to point out a GCS storage location, look for any activity in there, and when it does see something, a topic will pick up the message post it onto the subscription that we're going to create in a second and then Snowpipe will come along, recognize that and ingest it into Snowflake. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this syntax here. Again, it's on the Snowflake official documentation. I'll post a link to it beneath this video so you can access it. I'm going to copy this out. Now we need to go back into the Google console. If you're not entirely sure how to access the cloud shell, you can do it by clicking this button here. Take a couple of minutes to fire up, so while we wait for that, I'm just going to pause the video. This is what you will see when the Google Cloud Shell terminal window loads. It will tell you to run this command, gcloudconfig set project, project ID. So I'm going to do this. I'm not entirely sure actually if you need to do this every single time, but best practice for me, I always do it. Go into my project, look at what project ID I've got, copy this out, and add it here. 
I hit return here, it's asking me if I'm happy to authorize the cloud shell to make API calls to my project, which I am. So I'm going to click authorize. So now I'm going to add this command, gsutil notification create. So I'm going to create this topic first of all, and I'm going to call it a snow pipe. And next you need to specify a format, which in our case will be JSON, as well as the bucket URL in this format, GS colon, two forward slashes, and then the URL of the bucket we want to create the particular notification against. So if I hit return there, you can see now the message comes up where it says it's created a cloud pub sub topic and a notification. So I'm just going to go in, I'm going to close this down, actually, first of all. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go to PubSub next. So I'm going to click PubSub. And I'm going to go into here. Now, here's my Snowpipe topic I just created using the Google Console. I could have used the UI just the same, but I just thought I'd show you a different way of doing it. Now I need to create a subscription. I'm going to create a simple subscription. I'm going to call it Snowpipe underscore subscription. Underscore sub, actually. It always has to be a pull type of delivery um, to work with Snowpipe at the moment. I'm going to leave all the defaults exactly the same and click create. That will now create a subscription to the topic within Google. Now we've created the subscription, what we need to do is copy the subscription name. And it's not the name of the subscription you've just given it, it's the name Google's given it, which is here. And it looks like this in the format of your project, the particular project ID, subscriptions, and then the name of it. So it's got to be fully qualified. So we'll copy that out. Now I need to create or replace this notification integration object in Snowflake. This is what's going to notify Snowflake that there's new paths to be processed. Notice the syntax here, but it tells that the type is a queue. It also specifically tells it it's coming from GCP as a pub sub. It's enabled, and now note we need to provide the GCP pub sub subscription name, which we'll paste in here. So let's execute that. Now we've created the notification integration successfully, and we're going to run this command, which describes the integration notification underscore Snowflake, and we get another service account value. And this service account is similar to the one that we created earlier for the storage. But in this case, this manages all Snowflake and GCP pub sub interaction between the two technologies. So if we paste that in there, we've now got that. Now what we need to do is go back to our pub sub. And we need to go to add principle. And we need to paste that value in here. And again, you can see GCP recognizes the service account. And then we go select a role. Now in this case, we're not going to pick custom and pick our role like we did before. There's no need to do that. We go to PubSub and we go to PubSub subscriber. Because basically we're telling that this Snowflake service account we've created in the background just needs to subscribe to this particular subscription so it can understand when new activity and new notifications exist on this subscription against the topic. So click Save. Heading back to Snowflake then. We're now onto the point where we can create our snow pipe. In this case, we're going to call it GCS underscore snow pipe. Auto ingest is set to true. Our integration references the notification underscore snowflake that we just created a little earlier that points towards the subscription name. And then we give it a copy into command. So we're copying into our snow pipe table with our one variant column from our stage area which is a google cloud storage bucket in this case we're giving it a file format in this case it's json we're not we're just ignoring any other error handling for the purpose of this demo but you can look up the syntax yourself on the snowflake documentation there's lots of options you can use for error handling and so on here so we're going to create our snow pipe so everything now is ready we've created our snow pipe that has attached that notification integration as well We've told it what kind of file format to expect and where we're going to move the files in terms of a target table as well. So everything now is ready to go. We've got some commands here 
which help us monitor the snow pipe status and where things are at. The only thing left to do now is to upload files into our GCS bucket location, monitor our pipe status and wait for those files to arrive on our target table. So let's do that next. Okay, so now we're going to upload files to our GCS bucket snow pipe and we're going to upload a JSON file and then we're going to monitor that in Snowflake to see when the messages are picked up from the notification integration and loaded into our target table. I've just uploaded a sample JSON file into our GCS bucket. I'm going to go back across to our Snowflake worksheet now and I'm going to run this command, this GCS underscore stage that will list all the files we can see in our stage. There's our sample JSON file that we just put in there. If I scroll down, we can use these commands now to monitor the pipe status. So if I look at show pipes, we can see we've got our GCS underscore snow pipe ready to go. Or copy into definition that we specified here a little earlier. If we look at our system dollar pipe status and provide the name, we can see then that we've got a number outstanding messages on channel equal to one. So if we go back to our Snowpipe subscription in the GCP console. We in a moment we'll be able to see a message hit the queue in our subscription. Okay, so now in our subscription we can see here that our number of undelivered messages went from zero to one. So the subscription has picked up that message and now it should notify Snowflake and Snowpipe that that message is available to pull off the queue. The next thing that should happen is in this information schema.copy history command, we provide the table name, Snowpipe. And we're here we're looking back over the last hour from uh, the current timestamp. You can see here now that if I run that, we've got a file name, sample.json, so it looks good. We've got a storage location pointing to the GCS bucket. And we've also got the record that we've moved into the table, hopefully. So if we look at this target table now, and there you go, you can see that we've got our JSON sample record loaded in there. Let's go back and just do that again. This time we're going to upload another JSON file, but with a different schema. So now we've just uploaded sample one.json, which has just appeared here. Different schema, but it won't matter because our variant column doesn't care. It will allow Snowpipe to push the JSON record into that data type, regardless of the schema. So now if we go back to our PubSub, in a moment or so, we'll see a number of delivered messages drop off to zero, but we'll also see another message hitting the queue of our subscription. So this may go to a uh, number of two or number of one, depending on when it refreshes. So let's give that a second. Okay, so now you can see on our PubSub graph that it actually consumed that undelivered message. That went back from one to zero, and again, it's just picked up our undelivered message again which is the second JSON, sample1.json file that we just added to the queue. We go back to Snowflake. Let's now run our copy history command again. And now we can see we've got a second record in there, which is as expected. This is now loaded a sample1.json file, slightly smaller than the first one. If I now look at my target table again, I've now got two records in there. You can see the first one contains email addresses, first name, last name, phone number, and user ID couple of those records there. The second record contains some ebooks information such as edition and all language as well. So again, schema doesn't matter. If you're using a variant column, it'll all go into the table without needing to change the schema. So that's it. That's how you configure Snowflake, GCP, as well as a PubSub subscription, set up the roles with the right permissions required to read the Google Cloud Storage bucket upload semi-structured data to that bucket and automatically ingest that data into a Snowflake target table using a notification integration and Snowpipe. Hope you find that useful. Keep uh, watching, keep subscribing, and there'll be more videos coming very soon.